Hey everyone, I thought I'd make a video to try and help you out if you're considering getting solar and you just don't know where to start with the you know minefield of information that's out there. Um, so I'm going to go through the kind of top nine questions that occurred to me um, and try and explain them to you. So hopefully that helps you make your first steps towards getting solar power installed at your house. So first of all, just a quick run through of the disclaimer. I do not represent YouTube or any of the brands I mention. Everything I'm talking about is just my personal opinion and my own experience. If you do decide to go ahead, please make sure you seek the relevant qualified advice first. The other thing to mention is that Octopus Energy have now opened up to new customers. So if you do want to move across to a smart tariff where you can get cheap energy overnight uh, to to charge up batteries and things like that, then if you use the link that I've put on the screen, both you and I will receive a small uh, commission from Octopus as a thank you. Right, let's get cracking. Question number one. You need to ask yourself why you want solar. Are you trying to go green? Do you have an electric car or a plug-in hybrid car that you want to try and charge up for free? Are you trying to reduce your energy bills, particularly now when we've already had one price hike and a second one is imminent? Or are you just trying to make money by selling your surplus energy back to the grid and earn some money via the smart export guarantee? Well, if your answer was any one or more of the, the first three options that I've got in green, those are all good reasons. If your answer is that you just want to make money by selling it back to the grid, I would say this is a bad idea because the amount of money they pay you is significantly less than they charge you. Uh, to purchase it from them and it will then take you a very long time to recover the, your investment. Question number two, you need to figure out what direction your roof points. So in the UK the majority of people will be putting solar panels on the roof of their property uh, because we don't often have enough land to kind of put it in your garden. So there's two easy ways to figure out the orientation of your roof. Uh, number one, just load up Google Maps, go to the satellite view, type in your address to locate your property and you're going to be presented with an image a bit like this. By default, up on Google Maps is north, down is south, to the right is east, and to the left is west. Okay, so in this example, we're looking for a roof which is facing south, but the orientation of this property, the most ideal roof looks like it's pointing southeast. Okay, um, the alternative roof is pointing north or west but and you'll find out later on that a north facing roof is not ideal um, so therefore the answer here is that they have a southwest facing roof which is okay the other way to figure this out is usually your mobile phone will have a compass app installed so on an iphone you have an app by default which is the compass if you can't find it just swipe down and search and type in compass and up comes the app all you need to do is go outside your house on whichever roof that you're thinking that you want to place solar panels, hold your phone level in your hand, so completely flat in the palm of your hand, and stand with your back to the house. The compass heading will settle on a number. The most ideal number is 180 degrees. That means you've got a south-facing roof. Okay, so walk around your house, have a look at the front, have a look at the back, maybe the side, wherever you think you might want to put solar panels and perform this exercise. Put your back to the wall of your house, hold the phone completely level in your palm of your hand and the compass will give you a heading, okay? So 180 de degrees would be the most perfect, but if you have an east or a west facing roof, that's okay too. Um, a north facing roof is a bad idea because in England, the sun is south of our location, it tracks around the equator. So by pointing a panel to the north, we're not pointing it at the sun. So it's not going to be a cost-effective solution. Pointing it south is perfect. Pointing it east or west means it will work best in the mornings or in the afternoons, but not the entire day. So when you get your compass heading, any kind of number between 90 all the way through to 270 is okay. Right? That means you, that that's the pan from east down south and round to the west. If you have a number which comes up which is either between 0 and 90 degrees, or between 270 and 0 degrees, or 360 degrees, that's not really a good idea. Okay, but these are really two simple ways to figure out your compass heading. Of course, this is only valid if you live in the Northern Hemisphere, so I 
Okay, it's the majority of the world. But if you happen to live in the southern hemisphere, then you want to invert this. A north-facing roof is better for you, and a south-facing roof is not so good. But for people in England, an, a south-facing roof is ideal. Okay, and and slightly to the left or slightly to the right of south is perfectly okay as well. Moving on, question number three. How much power do you use at the moment or how much do you anticipate to use? So the easiest way to do this is to look at a recent electricity bill and on there somewhere you will find an estimated annual usage figure. The number will be expressed in kilowatt hours. And that's what we care about. We don't want the number which is expressed in pounds or your local currency. You want the number which is in kilowatt hours. So my energy provider here in the UK is currently British Gas. And if you're not from the UK, British Gas provide gas and electricity. Uh, so they provide my electricity. And on page one of my latest bill, right at the very bottom, they have my estimated annual usage figure. Right, It's highlighted in yellow. And on the left of my bottom left of my screen, I've just blown up that image. So it says my estimated annual usage is 4,942 kilowatt hours per year. So I take that number, and if I divide it by 365, that means I use on average about 13.5 kilowatts per day. Okay, this is the figure that you need. Or if you choose to go ahead, your installer will likely ask you for this number or ask you to, to for a copy of your bill so they can lift out this number by themselves. Question number four, how big an array do you need? This is a complicated question. So the simple answer is normally in the UK, the amount of space that you have available on your roof or your budget is likely to be the limiting factor. Okay. Um, your installer will figure all of this out for you. So you don't need to worry about everything else on this slide unless you really care about the detail. Before I explain all of the detail, a realistic answer on how to figure out in the complicated way is go and look at the product data sheet for your particular panel that you've chosen. On there, it will say what the theoretical maximum is that that panel can produce. Now, in my case, that was 385 watts. Then what you do is you figure out how much power that your house consumes in a day. So from the previous question, that was 13.5 kilowatts. And roughly speaking, if you produce an array, which is about 30% of what your daily consumption is, that gets you roughly to the right number of panels. So in the example of 13.5 kilowatts, 30% 30 of that is four kilowatts. So you need an array which can produce four kilowatts worth of power. So therefore, four kilowatts is 4,000 watts. So if you take the number of watts your panel can produce, divide that into 4,000, and out comes a number. That's a simple way of figuring this whole thing out. If you really care about the complicated way, of how to do this, then let me explain the middle portion of this page. So the theoretical max is 385 watts. Realistically, nothing ever works at its theoretical max. So realistically, a panel which is facing south will probably get you a max of 270 watts, which is about 70% of the theoretical max. An east or westerly facing panel will get you about 50%, and a north-facing panel will get you about 15%. So you see the real uh, wattages over there in that first box. Now let's take an example. So if you have a south-facing roof, we're trying to hit a target of 13.5 kilowatts. A realistic panel capacity is 270 watts, and therefore you divide the two numbers, and you're going to need 50 panels running it for one hour, or you're going to need 25 panels running for two hours, or 13 panels running for four hours. There's more to this, but let me first go through the other two examples. So if you have an east or west facing roof, the panel capacity is 193 watts. So you do 13,500 divided by 193, and that means you need 70 panels running for one hour, 35 for two hours, or 18 for four hours. And finally, a north facing example, only 58 watts is what the panel can produce an hour. So 13,500 divided by 58 means you need 233 panels for one hour, 117 running for two hours, 58 running for four hours. To complicate this further, there is a thing called peak sun. So London gets about 2.8 hours a day of peak sun. Edinburgh, by contrast, gets about 2.4 hours a day of peak sun. 
So what is peak sun? This is when the strong is at its highest position in the sky and it's the strongest. So it's the same as in the summer months when they advise you to stay out of the sun, you'll get heat stroke, all those kind of things. It's between kind of 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. every day. Okay. So this is when the panels can work at their best. Outside of these hours, so before and after, the panels will still produce power, but just not at their peak capability. So in London, we get about seven to eight hours of daylight in the winter months, and we get about 14 to 16 hours of daylight in the summer months. So in all of those daylight hours, they will be producing something, just not as much as they were able to produce in peak sun. So it becomes a very, very complicated calculation to, to kind of figure out realistically how much you'll do by yourself. I mean, you're welcome to try. There's lots of other guidance of out there on the internet. But if you get this far, your installer will be able to simulate all this for you. They have a tool which does all of this. They just put in uh, the direction your roof faces and what kind of panels you want, and out comes the number. To, off the top of my head, to give you a, right, a rough idea, if you had a south-facing roof, about 10 panels at 385 watts, theoretical max, should be enough to get you to the 13.5 kilowatts you need a day. An east or west-facing roof, probably about 14 panels, and if you had a north-facing roof, it's just not worth doing solar because it will take you so long to pay back the cost of the panels. To, to try and use the, the numbers above to get to the number, the way you do it is just do the calculation above and then re recalculate it based on having five to six hours a day of peak sun. And whatever number of panels it tells you is probably the right kind of number, give or take a few. Another way to figure this out is look at your daily target, the 13.5 kilowatts, multiply it by about 30%, and that will tell you the size of the array you need. So in this example, we need a four kilowatt array, and then depending which panel you choose and what the output is, um, you know, multiply the number of panels you need until you get to a number which is equal to or above the four kilowatts. These are not scientific calculations, but they will get you to approximately the right number so you have an idea of what this might all cost you and how big an array you need. The complicated uh, thing in this is that each panel has a different physical dimension, depending which brand and model you choose. So when I say you need 13 panels, all your panels could be really small, and therefore you have space to put loads more. But the chances are that the amount of power that they output is also significantly reduced. So it, it gets very complicated and very technical. Um, this is what you need to, to look up. Question number five. Have you thought about battery or storage? So your house consumes power 24 hours a day. Things like your Wi-Fi, your fridge, your boiler, all these things are always on or on standby. So they're consuming power all day long. Um, of course, the sun only shines during the day. So unless you are able to create an excess and store it, it means that once the sun has stopped producing power, your house will default to pulling power from the grid. Now, with the majority of people, when they get a solar array installed, it's designed so that it can meet your kind of standby consumption, you know, what your house just uses with, it, with all the different things that you have on standby or on, but it, it can also produce an excess. Now, if you don't have an ability to store it, this excess will end up getting exported back to the grid. Now, you can get paid in the UK by the grid for receiving this, but they'll only pay you about three to four pence per kilowatt. And currently they're charging you about 20 pence a kilowatt to purchase it from them, which is soon to go up to a minimum of 28 pence per kilowatt for a unit of electricity. So it doesn't make sense to sell your excess energy at lunchtime to only then buy energy back from them after 6 p.m. when you're selling it for cheap and buying it for expensive. So that's where the battery comes into the equation. The excess energy that your solar panels produce during the day can be stored automatically into a battery. And then when the solar production reduces, as you get towards the end of the day, the battery kicks in and starts to discharge this energy first. And only when that is depleted does your system um, revert back to pulling energy from the grid. 
So there's a number of um, brands that you can choose to get a battery. They're all designed to integrate with your solar array system. And once your installer has set it all up, it just kind of works. You don't have to mess around with it. If you do like to tinker with the settings, then you also have the ability to connect some of these batteries to smart energy tariffs. So for example, like Octopus Go, you can tell your battery that you have this tariff and it automatically knows what hours Octopus Go offers cheap energy and it will charge up your battery on the cheap. And then during the daytime, when you don't have enough solar production, it can discharge that battery. But at least the, the energy that you're paying for, you're not paying the full 20 or 28 pence per unit. You're only paying the, the 5 or the 7 pence per unit that Octopus Go charges for their nighttime tariff. So that is the benefit of a battery. So you can see in the example that I've put uh, on the screen that um, the, the grey and the orange bars represent the energy my house is consuming in an entire 24-hour period. So you can see that all the way through the night until we get to about half past eight, nine o'clock in the morning, we are consuming a small amount of power, right? It, it amounts to about three to four kilowatts in my example that is consumed by all of the things on standby overnight. So by the time I wake up at 8 o'clock in the morning, my daily consumption's already reached roughly 4 kilowatts. So if you had managed to charge up your battery the night before, then those 4 kilowatts would be free. Or if you're on the Octopus Go, then at least you're not paying 20 pence per kilowatt, you're only paying 5 pence or 7 pence per kilowatt, so it makes it cheaper for you. So this is something to consider. Regardless of the size of your solar array, regardless of what brand you choose, you can still have a battery added on. You don't have to get it all installed on day one, although the whole thing will probably work out cheaper for you if you get the battery installed at the same time as the rest of your array. Um, you can mix and match the brand, so it doesn't have to be the same as your solar panel or your inverter, although there are advantages of trying to stay within the same brand because all of the devices work better together. You can see all of the information in the same app um, rather than having to kind of scan between two or three apps to see what's going on. So thinking about a battery is a very good idea, particularly here in the UK where we don't get enough sunlight at the times that we want it. And so if you're able to store your excess energy, that is going to help you reduce what you are dependent on the grid providing. Now, luckily, we don't tend to have power outages in the UK. It's, you know, beyond 99.9% .9 reliable. But the point of a battery is to try and help you reduce your bills. Of course, the batteries are not cheap themselves. So it's a, it's a bit of a cost benefit analysis that you have to consider. They do come in different sizes. So you can get small batteries from kind of two kilowatts going all the way up to bigger batteries of like 13 kilowatts. So you can try and get one sized to what you think you'll need. Um, most of the brands, the battery is going to be stored indoors somewhere, or for example, like the Tesla one, you can actually mount it outdoors. They're kind of waterproof. So have a think about that. Question number six. So that leads us straight into all the different brands that are out there. There, there's so many brands that you could choose from. The good thing is that it's mix and match. If this is all too much for you and you just don't care and you find it overwhelming, don't worry, okay? Your installer will guide you through all of this and they'll have a recommendation to you based on how much power you want to produce and how your household uses power. If you do want to do some research, then here's a few brands. Uh, this is not a complete list and this is not a recommendation. It's just somewhere for you to get started. So a British brand is Give Energy. They sell inverters and they sell battery storage systems. Uh, two American brands are Solar Edge and Enphase. So I personally have a Give Energy inverter powering the battery, and I have Enphase microinverters behind every single panel. When it comes to the panel, again, there's a whole array of brands. So my ones are um, manufactured by Trina Solar. Um, there's other brands such as LG, Q Cells, Pimar, Panasonic. The list goes on. Okay. If you are researching the brands, there's kind of two or three things to look out for. The physical dimensions, the length and the width, the theoretical maximum wattage. The number is likely to be around 400 watts. It will range from 300 to kind of 450, 500. And finally, the efficiency figure. Somewhere between 19 and 23% is what the majority of panels seem to be on these days. 
Finally, to talk about storage. So again, there are plenty of brands who offer battery systems. Um, you can mix and match. But like I say, staying within the same family is normally an advantage because all the analytics and everything work better together. So Give Energy, as I said, um, are the providers of the battery that I have. Other brands are Pylon Tech. Um, going to an extreme, you have Tesla Powerwalls. And there's another brand called Sonnen. These are some of the ones to maybe look up. Like I've said before, with a big brand will come with big performance and they'll come with a big price tag. Other brands that you might not have heard of will offer good performance and a much cheaper price tag. So by my calculation, pound for pound, the lesser known brands offer you more value for money. Um, but this is all personal preference, right? It's partly due, due to the size of the array that you want to go for. So um, for my 19 panels that I've got on my property, the Give Energy inverter wasn't powerful enough to cope with the amount of power that I would be producing. And my installer advised I was likely to blow the inverter. So he suggested that I go to Enphase instead, if I want that many panels, um, because you have then individual micro inverters and um, they come with a much, much uh, higher guarantee. Uh, it's 25 years versus 10 years. Okay, so here's a highlight of some of the brands that you can consider. Um, it's personal preference, and if you don't care, your installer can advise you um, accordingly. Question number seven, is your home suitable? So putting solar panels on your roof uh, adds weight. Each panel weighs around 20 kilos each. So if you're putting 10 or 15 panels up there, you're adding two or 300 kilos worth of weight on your roof. So if you decide to proceed, your installer will send out a surveyor who will make an assessment just to make sure it's strong enough. If you want to do a quick check yourself, an easy way is just go into your loft, have a look at the condition of your rafters. Do you see kind of any um, rotting from water ingress? Do you see um, kind of any creatures who have kind of eaten through the rafters and have kind of damaged its integrity and its strength? These are kind of signs that you may have um, to strengthen your roof before it will be able to support the weight of these panels. If you've done any kind of construction work, like a loft conversion or renovation um, in the last kind of 20 years, the chances are that the rafters will have been inspected and either upgraded or replaced, you know, if they needed it. So you, you might be in kind of good shape there. But as I said, once you decide to proceed, they will send a surveyor out to have a proper look at your house, take photos of everything and, you know, figure out where it's all going to go. So don't don't be too concerned, but that's a simple way that you can check. Um, the next thing is, does your roof need any repairs? So if you're going to put solar panels on the roof, if you've got broken tiles or water ingress or, you know, it's dirty, like you want to get all the moss removed, those are things you want to get sorted out first before the panels go on top. Otherwise, you're going to be paying a lot of money to first get the panels removed just to then repair a roof and then the panels to be put back up. Then if you're going to install solar panels on the roof, the installers will need to have scaffolding put up. So whichever roof you decide you want to put the panels on, is it accessible such that they can erect scaffolding? Without the ability to have scaffolding get onto the roof, it's going to be pretty difficult for them to put these panels up particularly if you have a roof which is two stories high or beyond. Okay, If you've got a one-story roof, they may decide that they can get away with it with a, with a ladder or something, but um, this is a simple thing to consider. Finally, from an electrical point of view, um, the whole system will ultimately be connected down to your fuse box or your consumer unit, and they take up two to three fuses, depending on the kind of system you choose. So do you have two or three spare slots in your existing consumer unit. If you don't, not to worry, the electrician who the installer will send will install another consumer unit with enough fuses to, to kind of take everything they want to add into it. But if you want to try and keep your, your fuse box neat and tidy and not have you know everything piecemeal, then that is something to consider. In my case, I didn't have any more spare fuses in my existing fuse box, so I hired my own electrician who was doing some other work for me to come in and put a secondary consumer unit in, which was of the same brand as the first one, and and hook up a few things into there. So it, so at least it matched and it looked neat and tidy. I didn't want to leave this to my installer because they wouldn't they wouldn't get me the same brand. They would just 
use whatever they're used to using. And then I would have all these switches and dials and things in my in my understairs cupboard where this lives, and it would just look like a complete mess. But again, you don't have to worry about any of these things yourself. When your installer sends out their surveyor, they will make an assessment of all of these things and advise you accordingly of what needs to be done. All right, if you've made it this far, then you're probably now thinking about you know, making some inquiries. So how do you find an installer? Well, here in the UK, there's kind of two simple ways that you can consider. First of all, contact your energy provider and ask them. Most of the energy providers have a um, scheme where they will install solar power for you or make all the arrangements for you, right, wherever you are in the country. Um, Keep in mind that this is likely to attract a higher price tag, but it is more convenient for you. And at least, you know, these big energy companies, you can somewhat trust them. Alternatively, jump onto Google and search for solar installation companies in your local area. Um, you might have to kind of browse around and go through a few before you kind of find find a good one. Um, I would say that the companies which are not national, they only operate within a certain radius of wherever they're based. So I reached out to a few companies that I had found on Google and YouTube who had good recommendations, um, but they were all based too far away from me. And so they weren't willing to come out and install my project. So I had to keep on searching further and further and further uh, to try and find an installer. I would mention that literally today in the post we received a document. So if you're based in London, there is um, the mayor is kind of offering to collectively arrange solar for a number of people. And they invite installers to bid bid on the work for you. And then the person who offers the lowest price kind of gets the bid. You're not committed to it, but if you want to check that thing out, then the website is solartogether.co.uk. And no, I don't get any commission or royalties for saying that. I just happened to see a leaflet through the post today. And um, anyone who's based in the London kind of area is in theory eligible. So it's it might be an easy option uh, to find a trustworthy route. If you do decide to find your own installer, then the most important thing to do is to make sure they are MCS certified. So all installers of um, solar power, wind turbines, basically home energy generation schemes, have to be MCS certified to ensure that they're doing the work properly, they're notifying the regulators properly, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And once your work is completed, you will receive a certificate from them. So as you kind of search for installers verify that they're MCS certified, that they've got the logo, that they confirm that they are, you know, find some way of getting proof just to make sure all the work that you get done is legit and you don't have any issues afterwards. And the last thing to consider is if you need planning permission. So there is no straightforward answer to this. Every council and every borough has their own interpretation of whether you do or don't or don't need planning permission. So in London, where I live, my local council if you want to put it on your roof, you do not require planning permission. The only thing they said to do is to make sure that the roof is structurally strong enough to take the weight, which has been confirmed by the surveyor my installer sent. If I wanted to put an array in my garden, for example, then I can put a very small array, but anything bigger than, I can't remember, like four or five panels or something would require planning permission first. Now, like I said, these are the rules in my local council. You need to check what the rules are in your council. Normally, a good a good installer will know this anyway and make the relevant application to the council for you as part of the process if you, if you need it. But um, my advice to you is regardless of your installer, you know, they're not, they're not necessarily up to speed with the rules from every single different council. So if I were you, I'd go on the council's website and just check what their rules are for installing solar in your area. Okay, those are the key things to mention there. Um, you, you might be wondering if you need to contact the grid and say you want to get solar. Don't worry about that stuff. Your installer will do all that for you. You do need to notify the grid. Um, depending how big your array is, they'll either be, need to be notified in advance or in arrears. But your installer will do all of this stuff and provide you the document um, afterwards. You'll need that um, document confirmed by the grid 
if you want to sign up to the export guarantee. Okay, so it's important that, that you get hold of that document at the end of your installation. Okay, question number nine, probably the most important question. How much will this whole thing cost? Well, unfortunately, I've got the really unhelpful answer of it depends. So when you wrap the whole thing up together, if you get a really small array of maybe two, three, four kilowatts, expect to pay around £5,000. If you start to go into a bigger array, like, like me, like 17 or so panels, it was going to cost about £10,000. Then if you can upgrade to higher quality equipment, you know, I paid £13,000 in the end, and that included the M phase system, which is more expensive, and it included the battery. So the cost of the battery is independent of the cost of the rest of the stuff. Um, so the cheapest ones are starting around £2,000 for a quite a small battery, and they can get to £10,000, sometimes more, for some of the bigger batteries. Okay, so this is a personal decision based on how much power your house consumes, um, particularly in the hours when there is no uh, sunlight uh, to determine how big a battery do you need to keep you going in, in those hours of darkness to avoid having to pull from the grid. Like I said, you can choose to defer that cost of a battery and get it added onto your system at a later date. However, it won't be incremental. Um, I think you get a significant discount on the cost of labour if it's all done at the same time. But that's something to discuss with your installer. All right, so the kind of all in your cheapest options are around the £5,000 mark. On average, it's probably about £10,000. If you have a slightly bigger house, bigger array, you're going to be reaching the £15,000 mark and possibly going even further if you want to have multiple batteries and things like that. As I said before, the big energy companies will usually charge you more than a local company. The bigger brands are more expensive. So just as an example, I did get a quote from a big provider and they wanted eighteen to nineteen thousand pounds for the system that I was originally quoted nine thousand oh sorry, the, the system I was originally quoted ten thousand pounds for. And after that on the ten thousand pound system I upgraded a couple of bits and landed at thirteen and a half. So keep this in mind as you as you do your research. Well, I hope this has really helped you out. Uh, these are the kind of top questions that came to my mind. If you still have a question of, and I haven't answered it for you, feel free to um, leave, leave it in the comments and I'll be sure to get back to you or even make another video if we need to. All right. Well, thanks again for watching and you know, please hit that like button if this was helpful to you.